Hey, what's up, s'mores? I'm Shannon Morris. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Scams online are still incredibly prominent in 2024 and are made to steal your money and steal your identity. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. Millions of families suffer every year. I was inspired to do this video based on what happened to a family member that's very dear near and close to my heart. This is an elder in my family who recently got one of those tech support scam pop-ups on her computer. It locked up her PC, it made a loud tone on her speakers, and it told her to call a tech support phone number in order to fix her computer. Well, luckily she called me first and she told me exactly what was on the screen. So I immediately knew oh, this is a scam. And she thought, well, it looks real. But I knew based off of my education around security and privacy, that it was most likely and definitely a scam. Plus I had just done a system update and I set up automatic updates. I set up scheduled malware and AV scans and the like the last time that I visited her. So I told her to hold down on the power button until her computer completely shut down. And then I told her to do a fresh restart just press the button again and see if it popped up again. It did not. So then I told her to open her browser like normal, go to the website that she was trying to go to, which was like email or Facebook or something like that. Nothing popped up and that confirmed my suspicions. It was likely a scammy website pop up and a full screen warning on her PC, which was also fake. But since she did not click on anything nor call the number, it didn't come back after a restart the malware and AV scans were also clean. So even though this likely stemmed from a scammy site that she should not go back to, she did the right thing by not immediately acting on impulse or fear and not following the direction shown to her on the screen. Imagine if one of your own family members did act on impulse and they called the scam phone number, thousands of dollars stolen, their identity stolen, who knows? The problem is these pop-ups are often targeting folks who may fall prey to identity theft or money theft. And this is still really problematic to this very day. It's 2024 and this is still a problem. So how can you prevent identity theft online? Well, this video is sponsored by Delete Me, and this company is one of the core factors that I recommend using to protect your identity online. I'm gonna tell you more about them in a little bit with a really sweet deal only available for my viewers as well, but let's get started with understanding identity theft. So first we need to understand what identity theft is. This is when somebody steals your personal information to commit some kind of fraud. So that can mean anything from opening credit accounts in your name to using your social security number for employment. It could even be more simplistic issues like somebody using your identity to create fake social media accounts and then sending messages to your friends asking for money. So here are nine simple steps and my favorite ways to protect yourself online. Step number one is all about strong passwords and multi-factor authentication or pass keys. Now there are two things that I am constantly harping about on my channel. I'm sure that you have seen the playlist and you've seen the videos if you've been here for a while. That's passwords and multi-factor authentication. NIST, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, is a really great guide to understand best password practices. NIST most recently recommends that websites allow for 64 character passwords, which allows users to create pass-free these are not necessarily generated with a bunch of letters and numbers and symbols, but focus on longer passphrases with words and spaces. It's harder for a long memorable password to be cracked than a shorter one that has a bunch of symbols and letters. MFA and pass keys have also matured over just the past year with new options coming available for users and these options are getting more and more convenient. For example, you can now use your phone as a passkey to log into your accounts. Now, if you don't want to use your phone, maybe you want a passkey that is not connected at all to the internet, then you can also get a physical hardware key like a 2FA key to act as a passkey instead. Now these passkeys completely remove the need for the username, password, and 2FA code because they authenticate based on the device that you own and biometrics that you use to unlock that device 
or a pin, which is still kind of to a face since it requires something that you know. Now, all of these options are better than just using a username and a reused password. So spending half a day to just update your security settings on your accounts is extremely beneficial. Number two, now we already know that you should use a lock screen on your devices. This is pretty obvious in this day and age, so much so that this is now a requirement whenever you set up new iPhones or Androids. But your devices store tons of information and there are multiple threats, not just somebody accessing your apps without a lock screen on your phone. So keeping your device's software updated, installing good anti-malware and antivirus software and setting up scheduled scans and making sure that you never leave your devices unattended whenever you are in public spaces are all really important. And of course, whenever you do set up your lock screen, make sure to use a strong option like biometrics or a strong passcode. Section three, all about phishing scams. Now this calls back to what happened to my family member. Phishing scams are designed to trick you into giving away personal information. I recently did a video back in February about what bad guys do with your data and what is personal information. And this builds upon that video. You need to be skeptical of unsolicited emails or messages asking for sensitive info. If you do visit a sketchy site and you see a warning pop up about malware on your PC, you can usually deduce that your PC was fine before you got to that website. So in theory, it's probably that website acting sketchy, not your PC. Keeping your browser of choice updated and enabling security settings in your browser can also help with protecting you from some of those phishing scams, but we cannot just depend on technology to save us from ourselves. And for email, always double check the sender's email address and look out for red flags like misspellings and urgent requests. Now, if you do wanna see a video all about red flags whenever you're looking at your emails and how to check for like signatures and correct verifications whenever those emails come in, I did a video about those as well and it's available on my YouTube channel. While we are on the topic of phishing and personal information, we should discuss limiting the data that's out there about you. This can be done in a few ways, and I'm gonna focus on two ways in this video. First is section four. Now we all know that oversharing on social media can give identity thieves the information they need to steal your identity. So be mindful about what you post and adjust your privacy settings to limit who can see your information. You can make your profiles private or friends only, and on some social media sites, you can delete all those old posts entirely. Be mindful of information that is set to public, such as the names of your family members, the school you went to, your employer, your city of residence, your favorite vacation spots, when you're taking vacations, when you're out of town for work. Also be careful about what photos you post online, like keys can be 3D printed. Google Maps Street View can help somebody find your house if you post a picture of your front porch. Your license plate number can be found online, leading to who it's registered under. Practice good OPSEC, which stands for Operational Security or Operations Security to protect sensitive information. Now, if you do find yourself sharing this information online, do not use any of that same information to verify your identity with online accounts or institutions. For example, if you have shared the name of your high school, you probably shouldn't use the high school mascot as the answer to a security question. It is very easy for me to Google your high school and see what the mascot is. So if you use the security question, what is your high school mascot to authenticate when you log into your bank on a new PC, it would be super easy for me to type in your high school mascot and pretend to be you. So use fake answers or different answers to security questions or something that only you would actually know. Step number five, let's say that way too much information about you is already available on the internet. Well, luckily you're not entirely screwed. It's tough because first you may not know exactly where that data came from or how a site was able to get that info. And second, it's also tough because websites make it so hard to remove information about you once it's available. And specifically, I'm talking 
talking about data brokers here. And when you start focusing on your online privacy, you may find that your data was leaked via a hack or scraped off your social media profiles, or maybe it was just sold to the highest bidder, all of which can lead to identity theft. And I mentioned it early, but I do highly recommend using Delete Me as a quick way to monitor and scrub that data off of those data broker websites and continue opting out of future data collection. So this is how it works. You have a leak or a hack or a bid that happens and your data ends up on a data broker site. Okay, so you had nothing to do with that, but somehow your data ended up out there. Those sites generate a profile about you with your full name, your address, your phone number, your email, your Facebook family members, household income, uh, previous addresses, your kids' names, which is super creepy, the list goes on. Pretty much anything that they can find about you, they make it really easily accessible and they stick all this information together and build a profile about you. The data brokers give anyone who wants to like stalk you or steal your identity or scam you, etc., this little cheat code to skip the whole process of doing a bunch of reconnaissance on social media profiles to collect all this info from different places and find it and stick it all together. It saves malicious folks time because they can then go to the data broker site, search your name and find this profile on you. It's really creepy, it's annoying, and yeah, it exists and it is legal. So what can you do? Well, you can go to each and every single data broker site. You can opt out manually, which is free, but it takes lots of time because there's hundreds of data brokers. Trust me, there's hundreds of them. Or you can do what I do and just use Delete Me. They do it for you. I call Delete Me my online privacy assistant. It's something that I say, pretty often because I definitely don't have the time to keep tabs on data brokers throughout the year. I have enough adulting to do as it is, like I need to mow my lawn, but Delete Me offers this as their service. It is well worth the money in my opinion, and that's why I have paid for it and why I am always so excited to tell you about their product. Delete Me sends deletion requests and opt-outs to the data brokers on a quarterly basis, and then they keep an eye on those data brokers just in case any of them decide to stick your information back on their websites months after deleting it. So I'll give you an example. I have my most recent report from April. This one shows that they saved me 84.5 hours of normal search time looking through about 9,000 listings to see if any of those actually matched my personal data. And then they saved me 43 hours of time working through removals. My numbers are always going to be higher because I have a public facing job here on YouTube. I also have a lot of publicly facing profiles, but I've also had y'all in my community tell me that you've also saved hours of work removing information by just using Delete Me. So I know that it's great for not just content creators, but also consumers as well. And I have a deal just for my viewers. You can use the link joindeleteme.com slash Morse code to automatically get 20% off any of their consumer plans. That's joindeleteme.com slash Morse code for 20% off. And if you have signed up, I'm very curious to know how much time they saved you on data removals. So let me know in the comments how much time they've given back to you so that you can, you know, adult <laughs> like we all have to do. Thank you so much to Delete Me for sponsoring this episode and for helping us protect our data online. Let's move on to section six. Monitoring your bank and credit accounts can help you catch any suspicious activity early, especially if you're doing it on a reoccurring basis. Now, many banks currently offer alerts for unusual transactions, or you can set up transaction notifications to happen for specific dollar amounts. Now, consider setting these up to stay in the loop and keep an eye on these apps for newer security updates, like if they add multi-factor authentication, which is rare for banks, but some of them do offer that. Now, here's a little warning. Recently, several banks here in the United States have enabled voice identification matching, which means whenever you call the bank, they can use your voice to authenticate you instead of asking you for a phone passcode or a PIN code whenever you talk to somebody. While these banks say that this tech is secure, there are plenty of ways to use AI and current technology to duplicate somebody's voice. I mean, just look at the recent news about Scarlett Johansson and OpenAI. Luckily, using voice match or voice ID is opt-in with these banks, so you can choose to not enable this for your accounts. 
I don't have it enabled on mine because I am a YouTuber and my voice is out there. Section seven, whenever you are browsing the internet, especially on public Wi-Fi, using a virtual private network or a VPN can protect your data from any kind of prying eyes. It's kind of like creating a secure tunnel for your information. So anybody else on the same Wi-Fi network as you can't see what you are doing on your computer. Now keep in mind that the VPN that you choose should also be secure as well as private. The VPN should also not have access to your data, like logs or IP addresses. Tip number eight, if you are not planning to take out new loans or credit accounts, consider freezing your credit. Now this makes it much, much harder for identity thieves to open accounts in your name. I have never done a video tutorial showing how to freeze your credit, but since I am not planning on buying another house anytime soon, let me know if this is something that you would be interested in seeing. And Number nine, one of the best ways to stay in the know on current security and privacy issues is by being a part of my s'mores. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button to get tons of exclusive content that I only share here on YouTube and all my videos are free to watch. I break down technical security concepts. I make this stuff super easy to follow along with because I believe that security and privacy should be for everybody, not just the folks working in cybersecurity. So if you're like me and you just wanna protect the people that you love most, then subscribe and join me on this journey. So by taking these steps, you can significantly reduce the risk of identity theft and keep your personal information safe. Now, do you have any tips or experiences that you want to share? Perhaps you had a family member call you about a strange pop-up that showed up on their PC. Let me know about it down in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye y'all. A very respected old. <laughs> I'm really curious to know how much time it's like creating. It's kind of like that. I'm going to pick it up at the beginning. I'm going to record a video about identity theft. Forgot what I was doing video about.